Boom. Oh. Yo, what is going on, everyone? Welcome. Good morning. It is 11 o'clock in the morning. It's Wednesday, which means we're live from 42 West 18th Street right here at Arama. This is not a green screen. You are always welcome here, especially in this event space. And I had to welcome in Amy Touchette because you used to come to the original event space. You were on this show and we did it virtually during the lockdown era. And I was like, I got to have Amy back for this. So I'm really glad you're back. Thank you. Boom. I'm so happy to be back. Oh, please. And I just want to say really quick before we get going, Thanks to our sponsor, Printique. If you guys are looking to get prints made, right here in Brooklyn, they do it. And you can check out Printique.com and get all sorts of different stuff from metal prints to amazing. You get a lot of stuff printed yourself. I do. Yeah. I actually use Printique a lot. Like, not to... <laughs> Um, like start off Listen with to an this advertisement. Chill. Listen to this. <laughs> no, but they're high quality. They're quick. Um, they're, it's easy to deal with them online. Um, I'm usually coming through this area for some reason or another, so I just pick it up. I can save on shipping costs, whatever. I'm super happy. It's been quite some years now that I use Printique. So. Yeah, and in New York, it's like supporting local. So <laughs> go check them out if you want. And also, guys, thanks to Gotham across the street, we got our. Co- what'd you get? I got. Coffee with half and half. Nice. Yeah. Nice and You're classic. You're an iced, iced, iced guy. I'm very weird when it comes to... So my... I, I can't... I don't like drinking cold coffee that used to be warm, but I can drink this if it hits room temperature. It's very strange. I don't know Let what it is. Psychoanalysis begin. Oh, but I like... I, I like cold brew because it's less acidic and it's got a deeper, richer taste to it. I'm a, I'm, I'm a coffee guy. I just like really deep coffee. But just put some cream in there, Seth, I can't and do you don't it. have to worry about the acid. Oh, uh, come on. Cream. It's so beautiful. Cream. Everyone knows they want cream and they just deny themselves. <laughs> they do. And it's like, you might die tomorrow. Put Whoa. the cream in. Put the cream in, you know? He, he's dying over yeah, here. So. Great, because he's drinking half and half right now. He's got <laughs> half and half in his, his Americano or whatever you got. Dan it. Norton's a big cream guy. I'm, I've always been very straight up black. I always know I can get that coffee anywhere. They, you know, if everyone's like, do you have a cinnamon, vanilla, peppermint oh, twist 100%. thing? And like, not no, doing it. Right. That's like a meal anyway. So, right? <laughs> you know, you're just like, okay. You, that, which is, you know. Which I, I totally liquid, respect. Liquid meal, for 100%. I'm in not a rare, here to judge anyone. Oh, no. If it, in a rare case, especially if I'm, for some reason I'm from Vegas, I'll go, you know what? I'm feeling like I want something chocolate, but I got to stay alive. Let's get a mocha something from this coffee place. Yes. So I get it. No, I get mochas it. are great for when you're sad. <laughs> I really like mochas. Totally. Wow. I treat myself to a mocha if I need a, like something, like a little treat. That's so myself. interesting. Yeah. I think the most underrated flavor with coffee is... This is he's gonna make fun of me. Not cinnamon, but also sometimes with marshmallows in it. Oh, and well, that's a hot cocoa thing. Yeah, but it's like no one puts marshmallows in coffee, and I got to tell you, it's Who pretty does? great. Who puts marshmallows in coffee? You, you want to hear how crazy I am? Oh, I once oh. bought only the marshmallows in Lucky I gotta Charms. Go. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, but I, w- I once only bought the marshmallows that come in Lucky Charms, those hard, like dehydrated yes. ones, and I put them in the coffee. It was one of the best things I've read in my life. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, guys. That's a lot for this hour. I know. In the morning. But. We're we're live and you guys are welcome to ask questions to Amy, but I just want you guys to get in the sense of who Amy is a photographer and why I think what she does is pretty special. One, she's doing some really great street portraits, but aside from the candid which you're used to with street portraits, she will talk to people, get a little bit of knowledge on them and then ask them if she can take their portrait and you can see the demeanor in the images, we're going to go through some of her work, but you're also shooting in such opposite of the of the spectrum here. It's either Rolly, film, or iPhone. Yeah. Like, whoa. <laughs> I know. Like, it's a little, it's a little bananas. How many years have you been doing this while I pulled up your work? Um, since like 2012, I think, like when Instagram started really hitting, um, that's when I started making portraits with my phone. So they kind of came together, like, I don't know, it's actually kind of an Instagram series, um, just because I definitely use the filters. You know, my iPhone pictures bare are not as nearly as nice as, you know, when you can use the filters and and make them, perfect them a little bit. Um, But yeah, there's just like, you know, there's a lot of great moments in between times, you know, when you're on the way to the cleaners or whatever, you're on the way to... (laughs) Adorama. <laughs> um, and it's just kind of great to, I mean, I really walk around with my iPhone like clutched in my hands because I've learned over and over not to be caught <laughs> without, you know, the camera ready because these portraits can pop up anywhere, anytime. Um, so that's been going on since like 2012. And then the Roloflex, I think I also started shooting square around that time. 
Um, and you know, also when Instagram came out in 2012, it was only Square. Square. That yep. was like back in the day when it was super fun and super <laughs> was chill. Fun. Yeah, no, I mean, it honestly, was. like I'm, I'm definitely having like a little bit of an existential crisis about both Instagram. I mean, that's not really leading me to an, an existential crisis, but I definitely am a lot less interested in Instagram. It's like, in a way, like an echo chamber of my, first of all, the ads are like an echo chamber of my yep. my gender, my age, my personal style, none of which I need reflected back to me <laughs> or want, you know? I see it every day, thank yeah, you. Yeah, right? No, it's like, oh, I just searched for that. No wonder it's coming up, right. you know? And it's just like, I feel manipulated and, um, and, and in the beginning, like, I found so many amazing photographers like mm. in Africa or London or everywhere around the world and everyone was so friendly and it was very casual and wonderful. It was communal. It was communal and it was very art, more art focused. Like now it's a lot of selfies and yeah. those get a lot of hits. It's a lot you know, of videos now. Anytime I put a picture of myself up, it's like, ah, it's so much better than <laughs> like my, you know, what I think is my best portrait of a stranger. So whatever, yeah. it's fine. It's like that's where the collective is taking it. That's where Mark Zuckerberg is taking it. Um, but I'm I'm a lot less engaged in Instagram, I'm sad to say. Well, I think with the amount of years it's been around, now we have people who grew up in it. And yeah. I think they're using that as a connective point as this is who I am rather than this is the work I produce. Yeah. And we went through it like, hey, here's our living portfolio. But not everybody was us. Right. They were just eating cool lunch and going, I was here. Yeah, You know. totally. No, and I... I you know, I've gotten um, book deals through Instagram, like um, Martin Schilt, who published my my book, um, Personal Ties, that was made with a Roloflex. But part of the reason that conversation got started was because he was just looking at my um, my candid portraits on Instagram. And we had met in 2012, I think, at PhotoFest. So we'd been keeping in touch. You know, it's a way to keep in touch with contacts yes. that's super chill. Like, you don't have to be in their face. They don't have to answer. They can answer when they want. They can reach out when they want. You can, and likewise, same with you. Um, my The gallery who represents me in Paris, same thing. I met her in 2017, then 2020. She wanted to work with me. You know, it's just like a lot of it is timing, and you want to sort of be around in their yes. midst. So they're like, oh, I'm looking for work like that. Oh, remember Amy. I met her. Wait, here's her work. I can pull it up. So... There's a lot of really great benefits yes. to still being on Instagram, um, but I used to use it as a place to like make and show and present work all the time. And now um, that's just changing for the reasons that I told you. And also because here's the existential crisis part. Like a lot of people are on their phones now, man. Like so many of my photo ops gone. Like, oh yeah yeah like especially on the subway like i'm i have a job right now that requires me to be on the subway quite a bit mm -hmm. and part of the reason i took it was because i was like oh well i'll be on the subway i can make photos you know because that's always been it had always been a rich you know place for me to photograph lots of photographers over the years yeah. you know i'd loved it um and yeah man everyone's on their phone everyone is on their phone you know it's like a real, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know what to do about it because I, it's not going to change. It's not going to change. It's only going to get more and more virtual. Look at these goggles they're pushing out now, right? Like we're I actually tried some on last night. Well, how, for you, I got to understand. How was that for you? Well, it, it was like, <laughs> yeah, it was a little. I mean, I don't know what I was wearing exactly, but <laughs> it was some helmety thing last night at Uni Pool, my okay. boyfriend oh, at the boy. show. Yeah, and I was watching my other friends. It was like a video of yep. their of their song. But it looked like they were like right, right there. there. Yeah. And, you know, they look three dimensional. You're such a tangible person. You're, you're doing books. You're shooting film. You put out a de pe deck of cards. By the way, this is one of my favorite things ever because I always said cards would have been a great medium. Let me just really quickly pull this up because this is one of my favorite things ever. I, you put this out, I think, during, during the pandemic, right? Right before. Right before. 2019. I picked them up right away. And it's just real, real portrait shots. And and it's curated. Like you absolutely made someone a queen of hearts for a reason. You made that an, oh, that 100%. person eight of spades for a reason. Yes. So I was just telling <laughs> Amy that when I pull these out, I don't want to play with them, but I kind of for some reason put them in an order or I curate them myself for. So you're subliminally doing it, and then you're realizing like, whoa, like what am I doing? But it, if you guys 
want to support like a like genuine photographer in a community like this is a really cool way to do it i'll say that right now she's gonna sign it for me because i just asked her to but, <laughs> but i mean the I know, bodega guy i mean from new york this is like it hits yeah so these were actually these are culled from my instagram um feed and they're all new yorkers i of course make candid photos no matter where i am um but these are all new yorkers and each each suit is a different set of people. Yeah. So the spades are who I affectionately refer to as grannies, like <laughs> old, older. I love the older set, so I mean that with as much love. Um, and then diamonds are um, workers. So these are all New York City, New York City people, which yeah. is you know New York City is a major in, in influence and inspiration of mine. Um, and then um, let's see, clubs are twins and sets. So like oh. people who hang out with their, you know, their double or their triple. Um, and then hearts are just like the quintessential New Yorkers we know and love, um, the sort of extraordinary types. I'm trying to find the so, queen of hearts because I always pull her out. There she is. Yeah. I always pull her out. It's like a weird yeah. thing. It's like a card trick for me, like boom, <laughs> queen of hearts. No, I mean, I have to say this was like such an incredibly fun project, my favorite project. And for all the reasons that you're mentioning, like there, it's just very dynamic. It's also a little book in the palm of your yes. hand, you know, yes. and these pictures I mentioned are iPhone. So they were conceived to be looked at in this dimension. You know, when I, the iPhone first oh. came out, Instagram first came out, like that's this is the only way that you could see them. You know, now, obviously, people project them in all sorts of what eight ways, whatever. But. Um, so that's really important to me because a lot of my iPhone pictures are very simple. I never they don't thought have, about that. Yeah, they don't have like a, you know lots of elements in the background, and that's on purpose. They're very simple. Um, so I appreciate just keeping them the size that they were supposed to be when I first conceived of them. Well, what I got out of it, which is I guess kind of in the same vein, is that it's an intimate interface as you're one person but you can play cards with someone and then it's intimate but you're then like hey did you see that one did you get this <laughs> and you you're actually both interacting but you're both having your own experience it's very i know we're going real deep on a play of cards here but it is pretty cool a million years ago i i, I never told anybody this but a million years ago i was going to do a tarot card deck of my images mm -hmm. and i was going to do it i was going to shoot specifically for it i never did it and then you did this and i was like no, Amy? no, you can do it. You can <laughs> still do it. I'm, I support yeah, you. Tarot I have no cards ambition. are different. I have no ambition. Tarot cards are different. <laughs> but I will say that one of my friends, Dolly Marion, who's um, she was the graphic designer on this um, deck of cards, she gave a set to um, a couple of curators, yeah, in um, in Europe. Hey, Terry, <laughs> and. Uh, they have this two-year-old child, whatever, and they were saying that, like, their child was obsessed with these playing cards. Like, every day would get them out, and, you know, I'm assuming this child's having some Sesame Street moment with the <laughs> cards, right? But I just thought, okay, I can totally die tomorrow. Like, I just communicated with a two-year-old. That's cool. Like, it's crazy cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I still get goosebumps when I think about it, you know? It's like, wow. I mean, you know just having prints on the wall now it seems like a really conservative oh, <laughs> and wow. very you know just like um just run of the mill way to show photographs and now we can print on so many different things Absolutely. it's super exciting oh no we, we, the, the interface of the image has changed so much when i was heavily in film um i did a lot of image transfers emulsion transfers off of instant film and i was like what can you go beyond just a piece of paper and I did a bike frame, I wrapped it in all emulsion and I was shooting for the BMX magazines back then. And everywhere I went, it started a conversation, got the pro to connect with me, got those shots, got those pages, had a career. All because you took that extra step of, no, no, I actually do this and I'm really invested in it as a person. Yeah. And I think that's what people get when you get photographed by Amy is like, <laughs> she's in it, man. I mean, like she, she's talking to you for it. Like, I know you do the candidates, but the but the ones where you shoot, where it's almost like street fashion and they're together, especially couples. Like I, I notice yeah. how you have this like, presence of people in your images you could tell you talked to him for a minute you're like hey can i get you on the shady side of the street can we walk on this side well it's actually not true so oh. I, I walk on the side of the street that has the lighting that i prefer which is the shady side um just because the highlights and even the, yeah super even beautiful um and you know i pretty much like lower the contrast a, a decent amount but yeah there's photos can be found on each side of the street so i pretty much just concentrate on one side of the street um mostly because well because of the light but also because i don't 
really want to take up too much of their time. Mm. I don't want to have to ask them to move. Right. Um, and often... That's so much. I totally thought you asked them to like come with you to a better no, Oh, wow. No, okay. no. Actually, they're a lot more hands-off than they probably look. I mean, I know you can, you can feel my presence in them just because they're so complicit in having their photo made. But... Yeah, I try to be super quick. I only make two frames of each each subject. The first frame, I just ask them to look into the lens, and then the second frame, I might give them some more direction. Hmm. Um, but you know, I like to let them present as they want to for the first frame. I don't want them to feel like rejected or like they're doing anything wrong. They've just said yes to me. That's amazing. Yeah, I feel like wow, that's a gift right there. Like this trust, you know, I've got this film camera, I'm walking away with their image. They don't know what it looks like. Yes, they were there and they presented and stuff, but you know, that's a really loving, trusting thing yeah. to do. So I try to respect that as much as possible. And I just don't, you know, want people to feel like they're not doing the right thing. And a lot of times what they do first on their own naturally is way better than anything yep. I could conceive. And it's just really natural. It makes them feel themselves or not. Sometimes people are a little nervous depends you know oh, some change. people are yeah, yeah some people are good at, in front of the camera some people want to be told what to do and um so i just you know handle it that way so uh, whenever my trade shows people ask like why do I, I don't do posing classes i'm like because i don't pose people i think the best you're going to get is where they if you get someone into a room and they gravitate to that radiator that's their comfort zone for that specific moment that's where you're going to get them. If you want real portraits, like the actual portrayal of that person, instead of a curated, no, you got to twist oh, everything, yeah. bend a joint. Oh, my God. Yo. <laughs> I know. This is not like a class picture, no. right? Oh yeah, and then they're not them. And then right. they're your shot instead of this. And I think that's where I get your work is very genuine because you you have this demeanor to that. You're like, yeah, I'll get shot by Amy. One. I, like, <laughs> I can just imagine uh, the conversations that happen the drop of guard that happens. People that probably never get a portrait taken ever are getting a portrait taken. Do they ever try to follow up with you to get like the shot? Like, how does that work? Yeah, but not as many as I would have thought, you know, okay. over the years. Yeah. You know, cause a lot of people are, I photograph a lot of people like in their leisure space, like mm. whatever at the park or if they're just like chilling with their friends and you know, they don't want to spend a ton of time with me or whatever. I mean, everyone's very nice. Of course I get tons of rejections too. Um, not everyone says yes. But you not, leave not everyone's down to be photographed by me. You know, yeah, but you respect the no, that's the key. You I respect do. It. I do. I do. Um, and you know, of course I'm going to respect it if I'm asking someone, but I do make these candid images too, where I don't speak to people. Um, and so then I have to sort of rely on their body language or mm. them simply telling me that they, you know, aren't appreciative of me making their picture. And, you know, that's sort of a dicier place to be with the general public when you take their photo without asking. And then are they cool with it? Are they not cool with it? I really like eye contact. So I'm sort of waiting for that person to notice me, yeah. even when I'm making a candid photo. So, um, so a hundred percent though, you know, I, I have rules on the street. Like I won't, um, you know, without asking, I won't photograph like a homeless person or yeah. a drunk person or someone that picking their nose crazy. or, yeah. I mean, if, if there's permission, okay, that's different. But as far as just the actions that I'm willing to speak to on the street, you know, my pictures are not they're celebrations of people and they're not yes. highly political you know they're very they're about everyday people who i adore you yeah. know no i i have a i have a personal issue with people that exploit homeless for like these like dramatic moments like that's they're not set dressing yeah. this is a social issue and they're not to fill your portfolio I've, i just watch people go by and blindly take shots or people that make an entire body work out of it how about you give back to it? How about you try to yeah. find a way to get out of this crisis? How about you, did you pay, how, I mean, wh who we, Robert Kaplan? We did a video with Robert Kaplan for New Camera. He went to homeless people and made sure to compensate them to get their portrait. Yeah. And I thought that was one of the classiest, great things. He's like, we're, you know, I would pay a model. Yeah. Right? Right. Um, and, and you pay them for their look. Well, now I'm paying for your story. Yeah. And I was like, Nice job, Rob, if you're watching. Which... <laughs> and there are a lot of different ways to handle that situation that might not be evident to a passerby. So, right. like, you could be seeing someone who you feel like is doing something nefarious or, I don't know, unethical or whatever in your mind. But they might be, there might be something behind it that you don't know. Oh, no, like, yeah. I'm talking about after the fact. When the work is up and I'm like, yeah. you're not doing anything but exploring. That's when right. I get the issue. It's, right. it's not like, hey, stop taking pictures. Like, I don't know. It's not my business. New York, it's not my business. You don't see I know, anything. right? <laughs> 
If you guys have any questions in the chat, you're more than welcome to ask. You guys know this. Um, I'm glad you guys are feeling Amy's work. She does some really cool stuff. I I just love how everything's still tangible with you. You definitely have that like traditional photographic vibe that it ends up somewhere. It's not just I take the shot, I put it online. Like no, it's it's a it's a deck of cards. It's it's a gallery show. It's it's prints. It's um it's a book. Like I really I like that you have this end goal, this end game in it. <laughs> so is there a medium that you haven't hit yet that you're thinking about? Like is there something out there? Well. I mean, I feel like none of us are really talking about, or maybe someone is and I'm missing it, like all of the options for printing. It's okay. crazy. I mean, I just feel like, so, okay, for example, Adorama and um, um, the um, Adorama had this thing around the rink in, in, um, the, in Midtown, and they had like flags of pictures. Mm -hmm. And they were around. I'm, I'm like totally blanking on the ro the rink that is in um, Midtown. Midtown now, <laughs> like yes, Rockefeller Center. Oh, Rockefeller oh, Center! Wow, we wow, that oh, is. Oh my God, I what got, is going on? <laughs> I know. Sorry, I. You know what? I was out a little late last night, and this is my first coffee. No, so it's cool. Let's hope. <laughs> oh, she she had the whole like scarf on with the sunglasses. Like, don't bother me. <laughs> yeah, this is really really early for me. Like, it, it's really. I mean, I can't even tell you. So. Um, <laughs> Anyway, they uh, one of my pictures from Personal Ties was made into a flag and flown around the rink at Rockefeller cool. Center. It was super cool. And it's a photo that I've looked at many, 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 many times as part of my book and whatever. It's one of my favorite photos. And I went to go see it, and I was like, this is kind of extraordinary. Like, my, I can't see my picture unless the wind blows. So it was like my picture was dependent on nature. Oh, you're such an art kid. Oh, my. Oh, <laughs> no, that and was... Then, and oh. then the wind came, and then and then it blew from the picture from behind. I saw my picture from behind. Blew your mind. Blew my mind. And then it was like you saw it was a picture of a couple. You saw her, and then the wind would ruffle, and then you'd see him, and then you'd see her and him. And I was just like, this is so beautiful. Like, I thought I knew this picture. I don't know this picture at all. So I feel like there's just so many options for printing that we haven't even discovered or thought about yet so this is something that i think is really exciting when people say it's all been done blah blah blah. well i think the printing on a flag isn't the thing i think you're talking more about the your interaction with said print and and whatever that substrate is which is the flag in this case right like i i, I while she's saying that i'm thinking about american beauty with the plastic bag in the wind it's like the oh, most yeah. beautiful thing i've ever seen but a, a million years ago when i was in the galleries i used to cast emulsion lifts inside resin blocks so you could walk around them and see through and so i would put objects behind that were correlated to the image so you could see through it or see it covering the image and i think that changed the way we interact with an image because there's so many ways to absorb images we're we're looking at things 24 7 we're, we're inundated with images now being thrown at us i think it's the interaction to images that is going to be the next which I think what people try to do with NFTs, animating them and things like that. I don't know where we're going, but I think it's our ephemeral existence with images that's going to change. Yeah, I do too. Now um, imagine you had the goggles on and you could walk around your image. Come on, Apple's going to do it to you. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but I mean, I, I worry about the lack of contact among people. I think about it a lot, you know, because I definitely, um, I didn't become a photographer to have a photography career. I didn't become a photographer to make money. Um, I became a photographer to have more, more meaningful moments in my life. Like wow. I really knew that that was an art that would teach me how to gain people's trust and to look people in the eye. Like I became interested in photography as a consequence of September 11th. And I don't know if you were here then, but New Yorkers were like pretty tight. Oh yeah, and I, I was, was born here, man. Okay, Forget so it. So here we go. Forget about <laughs> it. Yeah, we know more than I thought. Than I was getting me. drafted the second that happened, and then yeah. the fear in my age group of that was crazy. Yeah, no, my, my little brother was in the army oh, at the my time, gosh. so I, my whole family we were like, uh, you know, um, but think of all the other families who went through so much worse. But anyway, so you know, for me, it's like I don't, I photograph because it and the more I learned about f photography the more I learned how much it informs life like mm. it teaches you how to like go with the flow and embrace changes and to concentrate on like what's there instead of what's not there like these are all life skills that can really help like if you're used to um, like moving up to a challenge which is 
what it takes to photograph a stranger on the street. You get this feeling, you're nervous or you're inspired or whatever that feeling is, you're like struck by the muse. Are you gonna confront that or are you gonna let it go and miss the picture, you know? Yeah. So there's like lots of things that photography teaches me that um, helps me live better. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of things are just like a way of focusing on what's what's there and versus what's not, you know, we're always thinking about like FOMO or, you know, but like photography, it makes you just, okay, what's in the frame? Like, um, what do we got here? Let's yeah. work with it instead of wishing something else were the case. So, so for me, yeah, photography is like getting on these phones or whatever, if we're going to be interacting with pictures, so so alone i don't know i'm getting worried about the world oh oh just now okay yeah. <laughs> just kind now. of kind of i know i know but i'm like a natural born optimist so i don't yeah, like to are. worry about the yeah, world you are <laughs> i like to be like we're gonna do this guys we got this you know and um i do think you know i am what i see just like i am what i eat so i have been curating what I what I take in for a long time and yes it is the good part of mm -hmm. life you know and being a street photographer like you know we were talking about my photos being celebrations of people but if you you know walk around with your eyes looking at people you're gonna see a lot of painful stuff too yeah and that's also important you know it's not like I just want to live with my head in the sand about realities and stuff like that but I just don't want to remember them you know like a picture is a memento of um something like that so and you know i leave that to other people other photographers who are really good at that stuff yeah. um you know conflict photographers documentary photographers that really go in there and they show us these really important things yep. happening behind the scenes or right in front of our eyes so i respect that work it's just not i don't think it's i don't think i'm strong enough or i don't know what the word is well, no i think you we all focus on what we want to know we notice what we want to focus on Right. So, you know, I'll notice th things about graffiti that a lot of people I'm with don't really recognize. And I'm like, or like ar some people that recognize architecture I haven't seen. I've walked past that building my entire life. Yeah. Or, you know, we just did a video with a camera that made me slow down. And I was like, you know, I never really looked at Cats as Deli before. But <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think you notice things that are timeless. So when I look at your images, unless I see a, a, a cell phone, I can identify that model or the cars <laughs> like it could be yeah. from any time. You just really strip it down to human, and human hasn't changed that much. People still want to do what they want to do, be happy, be social, hate life, enjoy that <laughs> burger, whatever it is. I mean, and, and I, I think the when the, the the twin sets in here, when they're not really twins, they're just people that tend to dress the same, or like people that look like their dog. Like you're finding yeah, comfort zones, yeah. you know. And I think you notice that, and that is something that'll never change because it's our human, it's our nature as a species. So I don't yeah. think that you're like not strong enough. I think you're bringing to light what people might be missing because they're going to their data entry job and hating tomorrow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I just worry about us not looking at one another in the, in the eye because, mm. and it can't just be like, you know, and the pandemic was a, a perfect example of what happens when we don't look at one another. We get pretty separated and it can't just be your, your pod, your family that you're looking in the eye. Like, there are studies that show that oxytocin is released when you look at someone in in the eye, specifically a stranger, because you when you you know when someone smiles at you for no reason, like that's a beautiful. Experience. Really, I think they they're trying to do something. Like in New York, if someone comes up to me and I don't know them, I'm like, yo, you trying to get something from me? Like I don't need this. Okay, well you're just a jaded New Yorker. I'm so. But when I go somewhere else and like girls actually smile at your back, you're like, wait, what? You're like, wait, what just happened uh, here? So you need a big hug. Uh, you need a big uh, hug. I'm, listen. See, you can't even be hugged. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do here. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I just listen, man. I, I'm always scrolling on your phone. I was, I, you know, you adopted the dark. I was raised in it, molded by it. Now, the, um, there's a question in the <laughs> chat. Dead. Yeah. Uh, Brian's asking, being a street photographer, do you ever attend various festivals or events on the streets? And photograph them as well. So I always look at those street when they close them off and have all the vendors. I feel like that's like got to be candy beyond belief for oh, someone like, like you. Oh, like block parties? Is that what he's talking about? Or, or, or festivals or events that are on the streets to photograph as well. So I guess yeah, actual events 100%. that people gather at. Yeah, those are great, you know, places to get photo ops. Mostly because, well, first of all, because there's just like densely populated area with a bunch of people. If you're like a, a portrait junkie like I am. Um, also... <laughs> You know, people aren't necessarily noticing you that much. You're in the mix. Maybe there are a bunch of other people who are also photographing, so they yeah. just, like, assume a camera. They don't think twice about it. 
Um, but yeah, that's a great, it's a great rich place to go. And uh, Mary Ellen Mark used to talk about yes. that too, like photographing around events, not like the parade, but like around the parade. Um, so yeah, those are really, those are really great places to go. And um, lots of like, people are happy, you know, it's nice to photograph people when I, they're happy. I feel like they broke the ice of being social for the day. Cause you know, sometimes you're in like tunnel vision to get from A to B in this city. Yeah. But if you're in, if you're cutting through, like, you know, I'm going to cut through the street fairly quick. You're the guard already, when you get past that, police like wooden thing you're like all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'll I get know. one of these mozzarella things or whatever you're like you know, you're talking, <laughs> what are the mozzarella is or what are they called <laughs> um they, 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 eh, never mind <laughs> no for sure brian any guys any questions you have this is why we're, we do these live is you're allowed to interact amy's here ask her go for it um just I, no hard questions. Oh, it's all the hard early, questions. Right? It's still only early. Had it. it is like noon. It's like <laughs> hey, we're on. all on our own different rhythms. Don't shame me. I guess I'm, I, I guess because we're commercial you know? guys, we're like ready, we're we're like grinding at six. Yeah, like I, I mean, know. when do you go to sleep? Are are you one of those people who don't sleep? I don't sleep. But see, I, I love to sleep. I and I envy you beyond belief. I mean, between the noise on the street, my brain not stopping. <laughs> I'll tell you, when I was streaming during the pandemic, I was streaming every day. Mm -hmm. I could not shut my brain down after I was streaming. I was already, you were carrying wow. a conversation virtually and I was yeah. finding myself more wound up than any other time in my life was after I shut everything down. I was like, bang. Wow. And I started doing like random projects. I started making buttons. I'm like, I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I was like screen printing like randomly. Like yeah, cause I, I have a button press from like my punk days. So I'm like, I'm gonna make Genius. punk. I'm gonna take these x-rays and make buttons, Meh, bang. And I see like, that's a that's something you could do with photography that would be really it interesting. Is cool. Like some, I don't know. I don't know how it would work exactly. But I mean, I always tell the story that I had a friend, my friend Carly Moore, who's a novelist. I went to her like, opening reading or whatever when the book was published and she had a little celebratory cake and on the cake was the cover of her book which was a black and white photo That's dope. and it looked amazing and i was like you can eat a photograph yeah you can you know like this is baskin like, robbins well, we technology could... is here kids <laughs> no, I, mean, I mean you can Robin. really do something kind of cool with that idea if you were like a foodie which i'm not but like i just feel like there's it's wide open and oh, we yeah. haven't even really gotten into like all of the different ways that photos can be received yeah i think photos are so realistic that when we see them on anything that's not paper you're like you can do that yeah totally you know i know but it, 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 there's a bit of magic to it and i think people get like um like even t realistic tattoos be like yeah that's a possible and then like it just feels that more much more like tangible to people yeah but photos i think are the most universal language on earth unless you're blind you don't have to worry about what language or whatever you're getting something washing over you and you're connecting with it. So I think what we do and we spend our, our entire lives as photographers trying to hone this is relaying a message that's so universal. And I think it's a huge responsibility. And I think it's also a huge undertaking. I mean, you're constantly out there. The next one, what's the next one? Shoot the next day. But you you're, you love it. You know I mean? You want to go do it. I mean, I depend on it. Like, I guess that's uh, what I was trying to get to earlier. Like, it's a source of, it, it's an antidepressant for me. So that's why it's sort of an existential crisis when everyone's on their phone now, because I just think, like, I don't know if we're not looking at one another, like, I'm not sure how this is going to go here, you know? And I mean, for me, I can still find meaning in, in making street portraits, but there's just a lot less. And it's just, um, I don't know, it's worrying me. It's worrying me a little bit. Just also, there's just a lot in today's day about representing someone yeah. and it can be a little bit politically fraught um do how you, are you going to deal with all that you know do you ever get kind of conscious about like trying to understand someone's culture before you photograph them like if you're going into a neighborhood that's a certain culture do you, do you want to know about it more so that you can understand what what is the significance to kind of put in the frames or whatever i think if i were really delving into a certain place I would do some research but there's no research that is as apt as meeting people one-on-one -on -one and yeah. just being sensitive to their vibe and not you know putting yourself so much in the mix I mean one of the reasons that it is such an antidepressant is because you can't think about yourself if you're making street photos you have to be thinking about others picking up on their vibes um, realizing what your comportment is showing to them so um, so I, I, I would think about it to a certain extent, but it's not, you know, street photos are, they're very surface. They're yeah. not documentary. They don't pierce the surface. The profundity is how much 
area you cover. You know, that's what's so cool about being a street photographer is no, you don't pierce, but you just see a lot of faces and you do a lot of walking and things change from block to block. And, you know, you're always like in the stage of um, like Deanne Arbus called it a, a condition of being on the um, on the verge of change all the time. Basically, I'm I'm paraphrasing, but that really that really resonates with me. Like photography is a condition, you know, yeah. not an action, but like a state of mind. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, do you ever get like really revved up when there's like an event? Like if there's a massive black guy, you're like I gotta hit the street right now and go see what's happening, or like sometimes. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, it depends. Um, but I, you know, I, I really like a certain time of the day. I really like the warmer weather. I mean, I can make pictures, you know, in any season, but like the warm months are really like oh, people my are time. open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And plus, time. you're also looking for a look. You're not just shooting for the portrait. You're getting. You're looking at light. Yeah. Like a photographer, 100%. crazy. Right. Um, there's it a just bunch of questions. happens to mean writing with light. Smoke, but right? it's documenting light. Yeah, yeah. photo, light, graph, yeah. document. I'm with yeah. you. I hear you. <laughs> um, with your can of photos, do you take shots that people never know were taken, or do you always make eye, the eye contact? So I like it if they look at me. So I wait for that moment. So I might start photographing before I think that moment is going to happen, and then photograph a little bit after, just mm. in case I don't really know. I mean, I these, are, these would be with my iPhone, right? So... Um, I don't use the machine gun. I don't like keep my thumb on the trigger and like do that kind of um, quick photographing. But um, but yeah, and then I just edit for those moments. Sometimes they think I'm taking their picture. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes I don't know. We, most of the time we just don't even talk. It's such a quick glance. Mm -hmm. But I do like that moment, you know. And and for me, it's like if there's no eye contact, I'm usually like no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, I like that. Like I yeah. like you know, sort of like the I like the Gary Winogrand. Like, you know, I like that moment of seeing one another. And you know, in photography, like it's the only really like polite scenario in which you can stare at people and we need to stare at people do you know we? yes oh my god can Zach. i just get to work we need what is to this do some therapy <laughs> this is like beginning to what end what's with women and tell me i need therapy what is this <laughs> <laughs> <That's> gonna... <laughs> we can start right now seth <laughs> oh my god yeah, right now no time like the present but i i do want to touch on you notice how many names she keeps on dropping as far as other people's work it's not it's very easy to get stuck in your own work, but I think it's important to find other photographers that have existed in your own genre so you can get different perspective points and vibes and kind of grow. And I think a lot of photographers have such an ego that they don't do that. And like, I, I don't think I could go um, a month without opening up an Avedon book and kind of like absorbing, you know, I, I'm a huge, it's huge. Your, I love Avedon. King, yeah. I love Avedon. I know. I mean, there's a lot of guys like um, Glenn Friedman shaped my the beginning of my career. Craig Stasek, all these guys. But if you don't have the ability to put the ego down and judge, because I, I don't think you're very ego driven, but there are in this industry, you know, there's a lot of you, right? Go find photographers that you connect with that are established out there. Vivian Marr. I mean, mm -hmm. whoa. I they know. didn't find her work till after she was gone. How sad is that? She shot just to shoot for real. But maybe it's not sad. No, because it's not if sad. she okay. is, you know, if if you do photograph for yourself, God, you're such an optimist. Oh, <laughs> God, it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. It's not sad. I mean, that's what it, you want. It might not be sad. It might not be. We don't know. We don't know. Maybe it's just a she crazy was. Story. It's what a crazy, crazy story, and it makes you think like how many undiscovered artists are out there, photo photographers or what other other medium. Yeah, they just aren't sharing. They just shoot. She did. I mean, prolific. Unbelievable. So prolific, like. It's just they keep coming out <laughs> like, oh, now she's got color work. And, you know, I want to be like, eh, it's running out. No, it's not. No, they open up it's another fantastic. shoe box. They found. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fantastic, you know, and I wonder because she was like a nanny, you know, yeah. if she had a real soft touch to her, you know, and mm. I think that that's that's a major um, mindset to take on when you're photographing strangers is to just be kind of cool and chill and polite and comfortable and calm and, you know, whatever it is you want from your subjects being that too so that you sort of get that chain going of, oh yeah of emotion it's a whatever. conversation for sure it's yeah. a dialogue but i think what's interesting about her and in, in, uh, specifically is no one ever heard her side of things like speaking about the work like you always get at least some sort of like paragraph or something they said about no the moment this was like there's no, it's just the images and what you take from it is what she put out there but yeah. she didn't even put it out there she didn't give it to the world mm -hmm. so it's kind of like what was the connection for her. What was it that kept her? It's so, if you don't know Vivian, like there's two documentaries I think on her right now. Yeah. Unbelievable stuff. I, I, it's so cool. But I think that's 
indicative of street photography because the experience is so rich. Mm. Like there are times when, you know, like I'll surreptitiously record my interactions. I have no aim to use them because it would be illegal to use, you know, someone's a recorded voice of someone without them knowing. And I don't keep track of everyone I'm coming in touch with or whatever. But, you know, a photo can feel really flat <laughs> when you've yeah. been there and you're just like, ah, oh, like this guy told me this story and there's just like so much that this photo doesn't cover. Right. And so maybe that's why she didn't really care about putting it out there because that's not really the best part. That's well, she, like a secondary. Part. You don't think that there was a part to she was a nanny. She didn't feel like it was really what she does, or, or maybe not. she felt suppressed, or not. I mean, I, we're so man, <laughs> unbelievable. What a balance point. Somewhere in here, <laughs> it's like no, the world is doomed. She's like maybe it's not. Like a little, t little tennis. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, the sun is gonna shine it. tomorrow. It's gonna be great. Um, I know it's annoying, isn't it? I'm <laughs> no, sorry. No, it's I'm sorry. okay. The world sucks. Oh no, it's come awful. on. Let's uh, leave right now. Go to the bar. It should be like <laughs> cocktails with creatives, right? Forget it. Forget I, it. I, I need drink, a martini. Man. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. See, this is your problem. Whoa, <laughs> man. All right. I'm now just we're, kidding. Let's go to this. It's wonderful. Yeah. You don't drink. <laughs> what was? I mean it. What was a photo that you took that made you emotional, and what was the story behind? It? I feel like you have a lot of those, huh? Yeah, I do. <sighs> yeah. They're all, there's a bunch there. Is there like but, a series? Is it like the whole street series for you? Um, I mean, I would say that be, the our, the book I did on bed which is called Personal yeah. Ties, that, I mean, I would often walk away in tears after people <laughs> let me photograph them. I don't really know. I don't really know why. I guess mm -hmm. I was new to the neighborhood. You know, I moved there in 2015. I moved to New York in 97. I'd lived in various places. I've been living in Bed-Stuy since 2015. And I just kind of fell in love with the neighborhood immediately. Um, and of course, the way I do that as a photographer is to also go out and photograph it. So um, yeah, there were times when just like that, you know, these are like anonymous exchanges. And so the fact that there are no strings attached make it a really profound exchange of trust. Um, so a lot of them, like just that people would say yes to me, I'd be like, excuse me, <laughs> like I'd need a little moment to just because it was such a beautiful exchange. Um, and this is what keeps me happy, Seth. I, listen, do it. That's I mean, why I, but that's, you know, this is what I'm aiming for because it would be so easy to, fo for me to focus on the tragedy. Yeah. I mean, some of the things like I really have to keep them at bay or else... They're going to keep me up at night. I'm not going to be productive. I'm not going to be any good to anyone on this earth if I really think about some of these tragic things that are going on in the world. And so my way of sort of counterbalancing that is to make these photos and have these real exchanges. And yeah. like I said, sometimes, you know, that doesn't always mean that everything's great. I have lots of really difficult, challenging moments. And those are as important, if not more important, to like my own edification and journey as a human being and opening up to you know oh, no, my blind is, spots and if this is a therapeutic avenue for you knock yourself out i'm not taking anything away from you <laughs> you know i just keep it real what do you want to tell you no, uh do post sub street subjects respond more when they see you shooting the rolly or the iphone i think the rolly is oh moment, yeah right? that's a good question though no the roliflex like is the best personal assistant photography assistant ever you know because it like First of all, it's big, so people see it, so they it's know. Waist level. Yeah, they yeah. know they're they know what I'm up to. They know I'm a photographer. I'm on the street. I want to make pictures, so that's great. Just to have all that spoken without saying anything is perfect. Um, and then a lot of people have memories of a camera like that, like their dad or their uncle. Mm. Um, never their mom or their aunt for some reason, but <laughs> I guess it was a man's it was a man's world is a man's world. Um, but yeah, that camera. It's just really old school. So a lot of people will just start talking to me about the camera. Then, of course, you got to ask for the portrait once you get that, you know, open. And then with the kids, it's super fun because oh, yeah. they don't know film. And they, you know, like there are some um, exchanges I have with kids that are just so adorable. You know, I let them try it on. I let them look That's through cool. it because it's like it's cool. And I know that they've never seen anything like that. Um, so I like to, you know, I share that. And it's also cool to just like usually they're like, wow. And I'm like, I know, you know, <laughs> so then the two of us bond, you know, and we, we've got all these years between us and who knows what other differences. And like, we connect on the street just like that. 
It's so amazing. Is, was it the role specific that you were like, this is the one, or like, were you just looking for medium format and you just happened to Yeah, I got a rolling? Yashica mat first oh, cool. because it was 300 bucks or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know, and then and then once I realized I definitely do want the square because I was working with a, a Leica 35 millimeter, whatever, um, M6. And yeah, I, I loved I loved the rectangle. And then I got really into portraits, mm -hmm. like as opposed to street photography. Um, and then I was just like, just seeing them in square. So I was like, let me figure this out before I go investing in a, in a Roloflex. Um, and then, yeah, I went to a, a portfolio review, which are like a very, really great place to meet people in, in the industry. And, um, Denise Wolf of Aperture was one of my Whoa. portfolio reviewers and she's like, you need a better lens, you know? It's like, see, Yashica Matt's great, but then after a while, you know, you just want to step up a little bit. So, but it was great to get that feedback, you know, from someone and just be like, you're right. I guess I do, you yeah. know, like, let's do this. You're missing some detail that I'm trying to see. It's, yeah. it's not optimizing, it's it's hindering, then that's where the- I mean, Lenses matter. Yeah. They do. Well, it depends, right? It depends on what you feel that you're going for. And if you're, if you're looking to put a separation between subject and the shot, yeah, something that like with a more character to it, less clinical, you know, something that's a little foggier, something that's got softer this, Vaseline-ish, Holga. Remember Holga totally, days? Totally, totally. Beautiful. I have one of the, I have so many original Holgas that used to come in just the black and blue box with just Holga written on it. It was 10 bucks. I used to be part of this collective that the show, you couldn't put anything on the walls unless it was shot with something $10 or less. So the Holga was like. Oh, that's genius. Now the Holga is 100 bucks, and it comes in a blister pack at it Urban is? Outfitters. Yeah, dude. It's a whole thing. Hundred bucks, and it's still the plastic thing that it. I don't think it is. Here's why. They make it nicer. Yeah, okay. because okay, every well Holga then. I have has a piece of tape on it that tells me what happened to it. So they they used to be poured plastic lenses. So I have one that has air bubbles in it. I have one that's soft on the left side. I have ones that vignette because the plastic settled differently on every single Holga. So I must have bought like a hundred wow. of these things. Oh my god! I gave them away to ex girlfriends, like all this stuff, right? And I think <laughs> I don't I'm love like, you anymore, but yeah, here's a Holga. The, I, I shot you with this one. <laughs> Don't cry. I shot you too it. much here. This is yours now. I don't even yeah. want to touch anymore. <laughs> but it's um. But I remember you know making notes on it and like looking through a loop, looking at every frame. Like not this one soft in the center. And you got to write it down. Yeah. And you'd pick the camera based on that. Now it's like, it became kind of cool. But the moral of what I'm getting at is sometimes even if it's not the highest quality, there's a reason for it. And if it's if it's doing what it needs for you to create an end result, who cares what it is? So if you were trying to get more detail and something out of it and something more out of the subject, then yeah, it was hindering. It wasn't optimizing. And that's when you start making adjustments. Yeah. And, you know, just like film, using film with the Roloflex. Yeah. It's not just the Roloflex, but I just love film. Do you lean on a certain stock? Um, I, I use Portra. Yeah. Yeah. That's NC skin tone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I said NC, but they had, it's only one now. It's only one stock. They used to have VC, which was like very, very uh, contrasty yep. or whatever and, and natural. Um, but I, yeah, I really, you know, I, I like to have skin tones be as accurate as possible. So I'm looking for the, the real thing, but I just love the grain, you know, it's yeah. just like a beautiful, there's a lot about film. It's organic. That's why. I know. It has its own soul to it. I know. Yeah. Like each piece of grain, like a snowflake. Each one is different, right? That's got to add up to something instead of these like perfect pixels. Man. You know, I mean, I... I can't see that with my naked eye, but like I can feel it. And I think that's why when people see film pictures, they might have a different reaction to them and don't even really know what yeah. it is that is making it a rich visual experience for them. Oh no, I think there's, you're interacting with the, the image completely differently when you're looking at something that, that reacted its own way to that moment. Yeah. How it exposed, where that grain structure lies. Was it exacerbated? Because sometimes grain can explode and sometimes it can yeah. be suppressed. How is it processed? Did you use Xtol versus, you know, HC one ten, all this kind of stuff. But yeah. whatever. Um there are more questions. Okay. I'm sorry guys. Oh no, that's oh yeah, Vivian Oh yeah, you guys are all loving all this stuff. Cool. Yeah, I mean I was also gonna say like just also working with film, like you really concentrate on the moment you want to photograph, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you just not like, what I like about the iPhone is I can be super cavalier and it's like, I'm probably not going to make this picture, but I'm going to take it anyway because I have nothing to lose. Right. Whereas the Roloflex, I'd be like, mm, I'm going to wait until I'm really sure <laughs> that this next moment is 
worth however much time and money is involved in, in using film. And well, it's a lot. You're also confined to what that is, right? So it's like if you shot something digital, like I can make it black and white, I can make it color, I can make right. it saturated. You're like, no, this stock looks like this. This golden light right now is going to look amazing right now. Like it really puts that like. Yeah, you make a decision. Right, yes. Yeah, you make a decision. Intent. That, totally. Yeah. And before I was really active on the street, I made a body of work called um, Shoot the Arrow, a portrait of the world famous Bob. And for that, I used oh, right. Tri-X. Um, in, in those situations, I was often, she's a, a fantastic burlesque performer, and I was in a lot of low light situations. And um, also backstage, small areas. I didn't want to use flash. I didn't, wanna, I didn't want the situation to look any different than I was um, than it looked when it was in real in real life, um, so I would push my film like three stops, yeah. and it would get super grainy, super contrasty, like kind of kind of this film noir, like thirty two hundred or something like that. Yeah. yeah, and it was and it was great, you know. And it was then as soon as I locked into oh that's how I want to portray her because she's a very very color colorful person like. Physically. She's a burlesque performer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like her whole house is pink and green, and you know, oh, that's so amazing. like to be like not photographing in her in color might seem kind of ridiculous, but um, that's the way you know I wanted to show her with this sort of like misty film noir, you know, yeah. nighttime kind of situation. So anyway, to your point about you know deciding, sort of locking in on the style that you're going to use, and then just like going with it, and then when you photograph, you see through that through that lens, like oh, this is. All that's going to go to the shadows because of the way I'm, you know, yeah. pushing my film or whatever. You're like you're you're becoming you symbiotic with the uh, yeah in sync with the with the tool itself. Yeah. When uh, I used to shoot a lot of Hasselblad 503, and I'd only shoot. Well, I used, to, I used to shoot a lot of heavily tattooed people because that's who I was around all the time. But everybody would always be like, "You got to get super velvia crazy sash." Like, no, like get the distraction taken away. Everybody just sees the tattoos and not the people. So I only shot black and white with heavily tattooed people and you cut right through all that noise mm -hmm. and you get right into those people. Yeah. And I think it changes the way people saw, if you're not from that culture, it changed the way you saw those kind of people. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, black and white's so cool. It's awesome. It's Are you kidding so me? Awesome. We just spent a week in Japan shooting black and white. It was so you dope. You did? Oh, I was ill. I was so wow. happy. Why did you decide black and white in Japan? Um, I just That's also a very colorful place. Yeah. You know, we were shooting for the Fuji film release. The X106 came out and, um, you know, that's a very film-like digital camera. You're shooting simulated film stocks in it. And just walking around everything, I just didn't want to be distracted by, oh, it's a pretty color. Oh, that's a beautiful blue silk. No, no, no. Like, I really just wanted that, like, I wanted to remember that, not the vibe, but, like, the the environment and the atmosphere more than, oh, yeah, these are pretty patterns on this wallpaper. Oh, that's a cool carpet. I was like, no, look at the expression on that face. Look at how old this building is. Look at how new school their modern technology is. Look at how tiny that garbage truck is compared to what we got here in this monster city. Like, it was just... <laughs> Like it's so, so polite in Japan. They even have small garbage. Oh, you know what's crazy about Japan is they'll stop the world to let you finish your photo. They'll just like stop the traffic. It's like such a photo respectable. You take a picture of somebody here, you kind of like get a 50 50 shot to get mad. They're like, oh, you, you think my son is worth taking a photo of? Go for it. There he is. Oh I'm like, God, get out of here. Move to Japan. It was awesome. We need to move there. Is, when's the video coming out? Uh, so in a week, you guys will see all that stuff from Japan. But you ask him. I haven't shot like that in like, dude. I was, I was, I was. It was like photo one hundred and one all yeah. over again. I had so much fun with that camera in that city, in this city. I carry that camera with me all the time now, just because I'm like, when you shoot commercially, like it's for somebody else. It's to dial it clean, cleaner, cleaner, cleaner. Super boom. Yeah. And there's a honor to that to be able to do that. But it is. It gets to a point where you're just kind of like, oh, that camera is my job, and it feels like a thousand pounds. When I was shooting like that, man, I was like, yeah, I'm taking my camera. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know what totally. I mean? Like, it was just so cool to feel like that again. And when I came back, I was like, I got to chase that again. Like, I, it took a minute. You get jaded, you know? You get yeah. really, really jaded. After so many years, you get jaded. I mean, that's why I don't like to make money through photography. I mean, I like to make it after the fact, you know? But you some gallery points, right? sales, yeah, totally. Yeah. But I don't want to go out photographing with someone else's goals in mind. Like for me, That's it's like I I'm yeah. either photographing for myself or not. And yes, I do take portrait jobs and yes, I do like them. And um, I learn stuff from jobs I take and whatever, but I'm pretty careful about 
mm-hmm. what jobs I take um, and sort of lean on other other things. Like I, I'm a freelance writer um, and that helps me support my fine art career because it's like, I don't know, being a street photographer, being a portrait photographer, they're not easy sells at the mm-hmm. gallery. But that's what I like to do, you know? So I just sort of try to work it out um, somehow. But yeah, it can be... It's okay. it's an important it's an important discussion to have with yourself, like when commerce is stifling your creativity. You know, like that's that's a real thing. Yeah. Have you ever thought about jumping to like large format, doing like wet plate, like some super super? Little bit. I, yeah. I could see it totally being a thing for you. I, I know it's like more curated. Yeah. But it's a it's an interaction, and then there's just that one wet plate. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I think I could I could see that in my future. I'm not really sure like what's going on right now. Um, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm sort of like in this liminal state where you know I had this book published a couple of years ago, and I'm sort of like in between projects. It, I don't know. It feels like a really kind of a different time for me right now. So I'm seeing like what's going to percolate. But I definitely always think about keeping it real. You know, yeah. last summer I photographed up and down Nostrand Avenue in Brooklyn, like. A, you know, I would walk Nostrand, um, same side of the street because it had the lighting I preferred and would meet a bunch of people. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to walk the same place. So I would like start developing but, relationships right. with people. The neighbor gets wise to you. It's like, oh, that's that. That's, that's that the chick lady. The camera. Right. Yeah. And then, that's you know, the next thing you know, it's like, hey. You know, <laughs> hey. So and like for me, that is that's cool. more important than anything else. So when I when I don't know what what is next when I don't have my sights set on a specific project. Like I just try to make sure that I'm still photographing for the reasons that right. I started. You You're going to get some fashionista hunting you down. Like get my outfit of the day. <laughs> Amy, I need it for my Instagram. <laughs> I mean, oh, they can take it themselves though. No, oh, you know? what? no, I just Amy. mean, come on. It's an Amy. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Come on. I got that. Well, Jason's actually asking, is there any insight on future projects or directions you're excited to explore? I guess you kind of just answered that, huh? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I have an idea for this summer that I'm not ready to discuss. Oh, oh my. Yes. Oh, the scandal. Um, but, the sc- you know, something out on the street, something just a little different for cool. me. Um, yeah. I also photographed, like, on the on the beach the summer of the um, pandemic. Oh. And that was really lovely. Um, like, the beach, you know, just did an it look urban like the pandemic? street. <laughs> yeah, first of all, it didn't look like the pandemic. Right. No one was really wearing their masks. Right. Everyone was super happy. We didn't even, we weren't even sure if beaches were going to be open, remember? Right, yeah. And then, turns out, that was the safest place we could be. Um, so there was a lot of a lot of joy there. Like I could definitely see myself going back to the beach. Um, that ended up just being like a one summer project. Have you thought about a self-portrait project? Because I feel no. like you shot everybody else. I'm so uninterested in myself, Seth. I can't even tell you. That's like, a portrait I'm photographer so, right there. <laughs> I really, I'm so, yeah. I mean, I hardly, I have to remember to look in the mirror. The lights in my apartment are pretty low. I can't, oh, yeah. yeah, it's I'll, just, I'm a, it's. I get it. Sometimes I have to be like, oh, you know. <laughs> You have a huge pimple. You should probably, you know, you never I look at that I black forget. mirror of your phone and just look into the depth. No, no yeah? I don't. It's all right. I don't, I don't. I'm usually like pretending to do that, but photographing. Something. Nice. No. <laughs> no, I try not to pretend. I try to be pretty straightforward with ha- it. And has the technology on the phone pushed you at all? Like, I feel like it's you got multiple lenses now. Like all this stuff has that been like? Yeah, but I just use the small. Like I'm still at the twelve, so I don't have. Or do you have the? Yeah, you've got the three lenses. Yeah, like I, I still have. You know, just the it's it's small. I like to keep it small so I can um, use it with one hand and yeah. photograph really quickly. I don't even have a case on mine for that reason. But even but, like the HDR, the computational stuff, has any of that hit you at all? Or no, no. I mean, it's just gotten much better yeah. over the years. You know, but they can still make bad photographs, and you know, it's not like always the best. You well, know, technology, and I I recognize that I could get a better model. It's just bigger, and so I just don't want to go there yet. No, my thing with it is like. It never looks like what's in front of my face to me sometimes. Like, it tries to smooth out right. skin or, like, oh, there's it some... smooths out skin? Yo, there's <laughs> computational stuff going on inside these phones. It, like, brightens skin. There's a phone. I'm not going to name what phone. It is not an iPhone. But it actually enlarges eyes, and it'll brighten your teeth and stuff and all this craziness. I'm like, that doesn't look like you. Whoa. Yeah, dude, in real time. So, like, every time I'm pulling this out, I'm trying to, like, scrape away all the stuff that it puts in here, thinking that you want it so you feel happy about yourself taking a selfie. Oh, my God. There's wax. You get the waxy skin thing? Yeah. It, it The waxy skin 
Like, I don't know. It just, it's trying to give you an idea of what you think you want to see humans as. So that's why I find it really interesting because you probably aren't um, hitting some of those features because it's like a, a little bit of an older generation. But you might yeah. walk into a newer phone one day and go, what is going on with this? Wow. So you might need to find an app that does straight up raw images instead of the own the native app. Wow. So that's in the native app. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something you choose to put on. I like think wacky skin, got, like big eyes. Yeah, well, the big eyes thing is another brand, but um, it's wow. it's a it's a thing. Um, wow. And I See, actually that's worrisome. Yeah, that is worrisome. Absolutely. Like what? We can't even love ourselves, ourselves the way we right. look. Do you, you know? Well, uh, you know Rankin, the photographer Rankin. Um, he's in the UK. He did a, a really cool series. I think you'd you'd probably get interested in. He photographed girls thirteen to seventeen with the most flat, straight-up portrait. And he said, here, edit these however you want so you feel comfortable posting them on social. And they made themselves look like aliens because they just felt like all the filters and all the craziness equals attractive and better about themselves. I mean, girls took away their nose. I mean, bleached out their skin, giant eyes, big lips, completely. I mean, it was nuts. He did like 100 of these. And it was just like one after another, these girls just kept saying, I'm like, this is what we're, we're cultivating is this over-edited instead of like, we're human and you're allowed to be human. I don't edit or retouch my shots. You guys see me shoot live. Those are the images you see. I want women to grow up thinking they're okay to have blood vessels and pores. I don't want someone not knowing what their grandmother actually looked like. Right. You know, like, let. why can't we go back to being real poor? And you're kind of seeing that now in the makeup industry. They're showing, like, glossy skin all of a sudden. Finally, you're allowed to have, you know, highlights instead yeah. of just matted to death, you know? Right. So that's hopeful. So I'm hoping that we have a generation getting like, yo, I don't need these lies. I want to see transparency. I want to see raw. And I think that's why a lot of uh, younger generations are, are gravitating to film because they're getting what they see. There is no, you know, digital... Manipulation. Right. Yeah. Like Polaroids and stuff. They're like all the all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think in general, the, 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 laugh, the lack of printing our images that I'm sure is happening now since we're, oh. everyone's, you know, just like whatever, we, we keep it on our phone, we don't make photo albums as much. And now just to think of those, when we do print, they might not even be real, you know, yeah. like portrayals of the people like, you know, I mean, wow. Wild. Yeah. It's like wild. It, it worries me. It worries me about humanity. No, don't worry about it. Soon there'll be cartoon avatars inside goggles. I won't even see Amy. I'll just see this like cartoon character with like big hands and eye guys. <laughs> like, hey, let's go shoot on the street. I'll be really thin <laughs> and really pretty. <laughs> I'll stop My this. teeth will be really white. It's crazy. You'll, you won't even recognize me. Well, it's crazy what the AI stuff out there doing now thinks you want to see. If you yeah. go to like AI editing, what it changes your images to as a portrait photographer in commercial land, it is like you're not even allowed to have a hair going out. Like what is what yeah, or or they illuminate your eyes you ever see that yeah, uh -huh. it's like we have light sources inside our eyeballs now we can't just i don't know have eyes i know have you ever looked at a person's eyes like it's incredible if you can just yeah shoot it uh, I'm like, i don't want to go down i'm gonna no i know i'm gonna Seth, lose my mind i know gonna, <laughs> he's let's laughing cry. let's cry well it just have drives me cry. nuts you know how many times i see amazing work from someone until i realize how much editing and then or the editing keeps me away from the actual shot i'm like i want to see what was actually there it's such a shame that we can't get back to documenting we keep on overly optimizing for a concept that social we think society wants yeah it's crazy to me it you know? is crazy but the it most impactful crazy. portraits are the most raw yeah you know the ones that win all the awards the ones that you see in the cover of things are the most raw portraits you're going to see and that's what i think you bring to us with this never-ending body of work of yours uh yeah. if, if you guys get a chance seriously check out Amy's uh, pack of cards. I think it's the coolest thing. I hope she keeps on making these. I want to see another series of this when you uh, when you sell out this whole batch or whatever's going on there. <laughs> um, I just want to say real quick thanks to Printique for sponsoring this. Amy is definitely a Printique fan, so if you guys have heard anything she just said about putting out prints, check them out. And uh, don't forget to check out her work. Uh, right there is her Instagram. You can check out all the work. Check out her books. Her, I think you have. Uh, do you have a show coming up? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Okay. Um, it's pretty pretty chill right now. Okay, but you um you are represented by a gallery, am I right? Yep, I'm represented by Clamp in here in New York City and Little Big Gallery in Paris, France. Man, look at this worldwide. <laughs> Amy, thank you so much for hanging out thank with me you. and drinking so nice coffee to with see me. You yeah, in I, person. I, like the last time I saw you was virtually when we did this for the original Coffee with Creators. I know, I know. Well, now you're gonna I be back touch here. You. You're, you're real. You're real. You're squishy. Yeah, I, in hey. a good way. No, no, no. I mean. <laughs> I don't mean you're... <laughs>
<laughs> no, your heart is a rock. Thank you. Your heart is a rock. Um, I didn't mean that. But I you're coming meant. back here. You're doing something. I am. At the end of April, I'm giving a little talk about um, just some some strategies for getting out, getting the portrait you want on the street. And you so guys just like a just like a, a an hour long thing. Yeah, and you guys can watch that live online on the Adderall Events channel, the other channel that you're probably not subscribed to. I know you're not. Go subscribe to that. But you can also fill these lovely chairs. And if you're here in New York, be on the looks. Check out Adderall on Eventbrite. Hit follow. You'll get notifications. Check out the Twitter, uh, pro, what is it, X, Twitter, whatever. Social, <laughs> they'll let you know about it. Oh, my God. I feel like we could go on forever, but I'm really glad you came through. Thank, Thank you, so you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's please. A real pleasure. You're going to sign I my cards it. now. All right. <laughs> Guys, enjoy the rest of your day. We're going to get out of here. Um, oh, Dan's not live this week, huh? Okay. We'll see you next week on the next one. Later, guys. Oh, check out my video that came out today on the Nikon lens. All right. All right. I'm out. All right. <laughs> Later, guys.